Hi everyone, sorry about that. We, um, we had the Wi-Fi drop and hopefully um, Christy will have a chance to join us again. I know Lauren's back. Hey. Um, are you gonna come back as, as the hi, Christy? Hi everyone, sorry about that. Hello all. Hey. Okay, here we go. Okay, I think we're back. Hi, I'm so sorry. I think our oh. Wi-Fi, something happened. Sometimes it happens. I apologize about it's that. Perfectly fine. Yeah. So we were talking about the 10 days of art and I wanted to ask if you could maybe just give um, everyone a sense of, of what that was um, and, and how you began to think about that well before anyone had the idea of a, a, a hashtag Blackout Tuesday. And I'm going to go back to some of the images um, that you shared with me. We had looked at this one here, which you said was from day two, correct? Yeah, that's day two. And so when we released our, our statement of support for Black Lives Matter, one of the things that we wanted to make sure we were doing was, number one, acknowledging the place that we were speaking from. We're an art museum, mm -hmm. and it is really important that we allow the art and the artists to speak. And so we felt like, uh, really acknowledging some of the joy, the pain, the struggles of the Black community, using artwork from different artists would really elevate some of the challenges that the Black community in general goes through on a day-to-day -day basis. And we didn't want it to just be one and done. Um, and so, you know, 10 days was our attempt to really cover um, a large amount of work. Mm -hmm. uh, we worked with all living artists to get permission um, and make sure that we could post their work. And that was really important to us. And so um, this is um, an image from Sheila Prebright. Um, it actually is an image from 2015 Ferguson. Mm -hmm. And it really, um, I think, just brings it home that these are not issues that have just cropped up we right. have been they're um, not novel they're not new issues no um and so we've definitely been hearing about them but i think COVID definitely with everybody sheltering in place and really keeping their eye on everything that was happening in the news and in the media really elevated these issues in a way that i think um has brought about a lot of positive change mm -hmm. and so um we work with our curators to uh, really um, choose each of the images and then really to not just choose the image and put it up, but to also provide a narrative behind the work. So give people a little information about the artist, um, obviously the name of the work and, and, and how um, it was um, even developed. Um, but we also wanted to give people information that if they didn't know about these artists, they could then, then go and do additional um, research. And right. we thought that was important. And so you provided a really good context, you know, within the 10 days, within the moment that we were all living in and experiencing, but also, you know, within each artist in their own genre. Absolutely. And we made a decision to do this uninterrupted. So this wasn't 10 days with other things that were mixed in we really wanted the focus to be on the voice of the artist mm -hmm. and also the type of, again, the, the work that they, that they were trying to convey and what that might mean to different individuals who were experiencing this. So it was important that there not be any ads. There was it was important for us that on our post, these were uninterrupted posts that really could um, foster a bit of conversation, if you will, and dialogue right. around the current climate. Right. And was there also, in terms of working with the curators, was there also an attempt to have works that were um, of 
representing multiple media, representing multiple um, or different curatorial voices and departments? Yes, definitely um, various collecting areas. So um, definitely not just work from modern and contemporary, but this is decorative arts. Um, and then we also had work from our American collection, um, our folk and self-taught art collection. This is photography. So um, this picture um, is from Dawu Bay. Um, and he, we are actually going to have one of his exhibitions later on uh, this year, which people are super excited about. Yes. But again, um, really wanting to give um, deference and voice to the various emotions that come out of just being black and having a, this black experience in America. Mm -hmm. And we mm -hmm. thought that that was really important. So um, Target is very different from this work um, that we're now seeing on the screen. And it was important that it, that they all be different and really show a wide range of, of artists right. and artistry. And, and so are these works that are from this 10 days, are they still available on your website? So if someone wanted to go back and take a look at this particular, I was going to call it a campaign, but that's maybe not the right word, but this intervention. Right. right? Yes, um, definitely. They can access, we are on Medium and um, we, we keep all of our um, art related stories posted. And so anyone who's interested and really understanding what we were doing and kind of going back and really doing an in-depth study of the works can access it through um, Medium. They can even go back to um, our social post and look at them. Um, this is Invisible Man. This is actually on campus. So it's outside um, and people walk up to it all day. Um, hopefully they won't be touching it with COVID, <laughs> but um, it is work that you can experience um, outside. And we actually acquired this probably now about two years ago. Um, and this was um, the Withdrawn Arms exhibition that we did was with Tommy Smith and Glenn Kino, which was mm -hmm. really powerful, mm -hmm. um, really about the 1968 Olympics and the image that everyone sees and not a lot of people probably know a whole lot about. So before Colin Kaepernick, Tommy Smith was really leading the way um, in talking about injustices that that um, black people and I think humanity was experiencing. Right. Um, and that was and, that 1968 Mexico City yes. Olympics, um, where he and his colleague had won the silver and gold respectively, and they had their raised fists, their in, in in you know in in enclosed in a black glove. Yes. Um, and it caused a, a global um, and international uproar because of the way in which they were supporting the Black Power movement yes. at that time. And essentially, those gentlemen were not afforded to continue their craft um, as Olympians and as athletes because they were, they were um, so, you know, Outspoken. ridiculed. Yeah, yeah, and ridiculed by so many people about an action that they thought they were taking in a peaceful way. Mm -hmm. So all of these works are, are on, everything is on view except for the Kara Walker, but we do have an interactive virtually that people can go to the Kara Walker. It's a, an amazing piece. Um, this picture doesn't do it justice in terms of the scale and sheer right. size of the work, but the interactive we created, which is virtual, gives you an opportunity to click on each figure in the artwork and learn what the satire and what the the symbolism was behind Carol Walker's um, the work that she did developed. So, so is that an interactive then that you did in in um, in coordination with Walker herself? Um, no, in terms of, of being able to interact with each of the um, the silhouettes. It, it's an interactive that um, my team, in collaboration with curatorial and. Um, our interpretative team um, got together and, and really created um, as an in-gallery experience to give people a more in-depth look at this work. Okay. Okay. Well, I think I might have to go and take my, my class next spring, Slavery and Visual Culture, to that interactive piece to see it's this a, work. It's, it, it's really a different way to experience it, especially if you can't be in the actual 
groom, you know, right. to experience the, the silhouettes um, as they're installed on the wall. There was someone who just commented that they went to her Domino Sugar Factory um, installation in Brooklyn in 2015. So, yes, I know there are a lot of fans of Carol Walker's work here with us today. So I'm looking um, at the time we, on the one hand, we actually have like a whole other hour from when we came on again, but we, we, we also know that we want to respect your time and had allotted a certain amount of time. Um, but just looking at, at the fact that we're about to be at the top of the one o'clock hour, um, I wanted to maybe ask if you would say something um, to our students who um, are probably on with us today, listening, joining us. And this, this recording, um, which I will post on our IGTV after we conclude will be available for the next um, 24 hours. And I know that we'll have a clean copy that Lauren Harris will have available for us as well. So um, anything, any pearls of wisdom for our students? You know, I, I guess I would say in my own career, I haven't necessarily followed a formula. What I have said is that I'm passionate about a lot of different things. So don't allow anyone to box you in. Um, I've done communication across a lot of different industries. And I've always said the thing that remains the same is the foundation of communication. That does not change. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you have to learn about different industries and organizations. And so don't allow anyone to tell you that you have to remain in a certain place or space if you're interested in exploring other things. Um, definitely explore, figure out what you love, what you don't like. And I think, again, everything that you're doing is preparing you for the next thing that you will do. So remember that. Absolutely. Wow. Well, I just want to say thank you so much again, Christy Swink Benson, for joining us today on Lunchtime Live, for sharing with us your world of expertise about the field of communications, your work at the High Museum. Thank you so much for partnering with us at the AUC Art Collective for really working with us, not just today in this hour, but also um, for being an inspiration for many of us and, and our students, especially those who are in the early college program this summer. We're, we're grateful for your partnership and look forward to the opportunity to visit the High now that you're open. Um, yes. in person, getting our time tickets and to, um, you know, to treat that experience of, you know, whenever I think about, uh, about a time ticket for a museum, it's always about, you know, this blockbuster exhibition that you can't get into. And this is a different way to really think about um, how precious we all each are, each of us are, how pre precious human life is, how precious the world of art is, and to really treat it um, with that measure of, of respect and, um, and agility. So thank you so much. Thank you for having me, Dr. Finley. And I also want to shout out a couple of folks, Lauren, um, Alex, who's on my team and is the marketing manager. And I could not do half the things that I do without her. One of my best friends, Mamie Madden, is in, in the house. Yay. So I really appreciate all of the support. I saw Amani um, who supported um, and, and just really has been a great partner with the High Museum when she was with the Alvin Ailey Dance Theater. So again, it really does come together and it really is a collaborative effort. So I'd love to, to come back anytime you'll have me. Um, and anytime. I'm happy to answer. Yeah, any I, I feel like we had so much more to talk about. The I other know. thing is there were questions too in the queue from when we got cut earlier that I didn't get a chance to ask you, but um, we will figure out another time. Maybe, you know, in the beginning of the academic year, we could also talk about what our plans are here at the AUC Art Collective for, um, you know, reopening and, and, and engaging with our students again. And we can also talk about ways that we can collaborate as well. And I just also want to say, um, lastly, thank you too for going live from the High's um, Instagram. I, I'm really happy for that as well. And um, we hope that, again, we'll continue to um, have fruitful collaborations going forward. Absolutely. Thank yeah. you so much. All and right. everybody be safe. <laughs> yes, be safe. And thank yes. you so much. Thank Take you. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.